So let, let me first uh, thank the organizers uh, for uh, putting our paper on the symposium and for inviting us to, to submit. Um, and, and thank you also for scheduling our talk uh, early, uh, which is before my bedtime. Uh, yeah, so uh, this paper, as the title indicates, is about uh, uh, dividend policy. Um, and I think we, we all agree that uh, dividend policy is one of the central decisions that CFOs have to make. Uh, but I think at least when I teach dividend uh, policy uh, to MBA students, we, we still have a hard time once we go beyond uh, the Modigliani-Miller uh, level. Uh, and, and I think one of the nice uh, stylized facts that we're uh, hanging on to in teaching is that it's, it's a very established fact that dividends are smooth. Uh, that you know, earnings are much more volatile than, than dividends and that uh, uh, managers and, and, and presumably investors uh, put emphasis or have had preferences uh, for smoothness. Uh, but even, even that is not, uh, uh, there's not a, a whole lot of uh, empirical uh, basis to, to, to say that in, in the sense that do we know that earnings are smooth in, in, in different environments or, or are they just uh, smooth in, in normal regimes? And, and also, you know, how do we reconcile the fact that earnings uh, are supposed to be very smooth, but uh, when we look at the returns of uh, short-term dividend contracts, dividend futures, the, the returns seem to be pretty high. And and, uh, and 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 you know how how, how is the cross-sectional pattern of uh, dividend uh, uh, or, or, uh, the, the time series of, of dividend patterns? Uh, and so so what we're doing in this paper is we're, we're providing some evidence. We're using COVID nineteen, uh, as many others do, as a laboratory uh, to to answer these, these these questions. And and in particular, we are. Uh, using dividend futures prices, and 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 we also look at realized uh, dividend cuts and, and dividend payments, compare them to equity uh, price changes, equity returns um, during and and uh, after the the onset of, of COVID nineteen, and as I, as I said, we we're we're trying to understand uh, what was the role. Uh, that regulators played uh, to, to drive uh, the uh, dividend decisions. And uh, can we say a little bit at least about uh, some firm characteristics which might be uh, related to this? So, so here is a, a quote uh, from, from Chad Holiday, the uh, uh, chairman of Royal Dutch Shell. Um, uh, who said exactly one year ago, April 30th, I see, uh, that, uh, that shareholder returns are a fundamental part of Shell's financial framework. However, given that we are now in this prolonged uh, situation of uncertainty, maintaining the current level of shareholder distributions is not prudent. And if you look at the, uh, the, the, the little graph that, that, that we have on the, on the left-hand side, you can see why he made this statement because the uh, Shell's uh, dividend dynamics were kind of hovering, hovering around zero. You know, sometimes they increase 10%, 20%, even sometimes, uh, sometimes they, they drop at 10%, but, but in 2020, uh, they, they, really, uh, they really dropped uh, by 50%. So that's already a, a sort of a hint that maybe uh, uh, dividend smoothing is not uh, that prevalent in, in these uh, times of uh, distress. So um, before I, I go into the details, let me uh, summarize the main result, the main takeaways. So uh, we start to, to provide evidence that uh, dividends before the onset of COVID-19, indeed, still are smooth the way we teach it, and uh, they, they, they are much less uh, uh, volatile than, uh, uh, than earnings. 
uh, and but that dividend expectations, which are implicit in the futures prices, uh, they decline dramatically once once we learn uh, about COVID nineteen, and they only recovered partially. And uh, I will show you a, a couple of graphs that that demonstrate that the fraction of the overall equity market valuation, uh, which can be explained through near-term dividend futures, has actually declined substantially, which is essentially the opposite of dividend smoothing. You, you would think that if you have a, a, a sharp drop in share prices and dividends are smooth, you, you should get the opposite. And then uh, we, we, we correlate uh, the dividend drawdowns uh, with uh, uh, certain corporate uh, characteristics, uh, such as leverage, uh, such as uh, debt maturity, uh, retained earnings in the previous year, which is which is 2019. Uh, we also relate it uh, to the uh, uh, distributional characteristics of the, of the firm stock price, namely the the the, the coskewness of the stock returns, and and we have. A little sort of indicative uh, evidence that the dividend crash uh, might also be related uh, to firms' exposure uh, to the COVID-19 geographically. Uh, but but one thing that comes out very very clearly is that regulation played a very important role, uh, especially in the heavily regulated financial sector. Uh, dividends and uh, were were uh, restricted and. Uh, and, uh, and that shows up in, in the data. And, and we, we have also one uh, last result that uh, shows that uh, uh, heavy dividend cutters um, seem to have experienced um, an increase in their systematic risk after the onset of the, of the disaster. So their betas, their uh, cap and betas are higher. So uh, this is the, the obligatory, uh, literature page, I, I don't want to spend too much time on, on that, uh, but obviously if you write a paper on dividends, uh, the, the, the number of related papers goes to infinity, uh, but you know, the, the, the strands of literature that we are related to is obviously the, 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 the uh, does, does dividend policy matter, which goes back to Modigliani and Miller. Uh, and, and, and then there's a, a big uh, literature on, on dividend smoothing, which is probably most closely related. And, and you know, going back to the questionnaires that Lindner did and, and, and Braff uh, and, and his co-authors redid in some sense in, in 2005, where, where they showed that the dividend smoothing, if, if anything, is, is even more important in 2005 uh, than it was in, in 1956. Um, and then there's uh, also an emerging literature that uses dividend futures uh, that, uh, that we are related to. And, and then there's the, the papers on, on downside risk, which is essentially uh, what, what we are uh, pushing here, uh, that the dividend part, the near, near uh, the, the value of the near dividend part is substantially exposed to this downside risk. Um, and, and then there's this exploding literature uh, to which we all uh, contribute at this uh, symposium uh, on, on COVID and finance. So um, here is um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the evidence that in normal times, uh, dividends are indeed smooth. And so what, what we have here is just a standard uh, regression analysis of uh, index dividend futures uh, with maturity 2020 and also with maturity 2021 on the respective index. So the, the, obviously the index uh, dividend future of the Eurostox 50 is regressed on the, on the Eurostox 50 uh, total return and the S&P 500 on the S&P 500 total return and the FTSE also. Um, and you can see here uh, that the, the beta uh, coefficients are uh, substantially lower than, than, than one, um, if, uh, a little bit uh, higher for, for, the, for the longer maturity dividend future, but, but, but in both cases, uh, it's, it's clear uh, that you have this smoothing effect uh, showing up in the, 
in the data very nicely. So these are these are data that go from March 2000, uh, 2017 uh, to February 2020. Now, how, how do things look when, when we include uh, the uh, pandemic uh, period? So um, what you see here on the left panel is the, uh, the, 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 the result for the Eurostox 50 and the, on the right panel, the, the S&P 500. The black uh, line is the market excess return uh, since we're comparing that uh, with the futures returns we, we need to compare excess returns with the futures returns and you see that the dividend futures uh, before as 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 the, the uh, previous slide indicated uh, moves smoothly low beta uh, but then at the onset of the pandemic the drop in the, so all of a sudden the, the the low beta effect is gone it seems uh, the the drop in the red line is is more dramatic than the drop in the black line which is which is as we said the the total market return and a very similar picture maybe not quite as uh, dramatic uh, but almost uh, is is also uh, uh, true for for the us for the us data so and there's only a uh, partial recovery. Um, now here, I, I like this uh, graph because it, it shows you on the left hand side again for the Eurostox 50 on the right hand side, the, the S&P 500, uh, cumulative, uh, the proportion of the overall market value, which is explained uh, by the various dividend uh, contracts. So these, these are again indexed uh, futures uh, and, and the lowest uh, black line uh, on the left is, is essentially the, um, uh, the, the, the value which, uh, which is made up uh, by a constant maturity one year future dividend futures and 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 so you might ask well there are no constant maturity dividend futures well we create them synthetically by uh, just combining two adjacent uh, futures contracts and and then changing the weights so that the uh, effective maturity is always constant at one year and you can see that for the uh, for the euro uh, for stocks for 50 the one the first year of dividends uh, uh, if you go out one year, makes up a little bit less than 5%, and then you add the second year and the third, fourth, fifth. As, as you go out five years, the cumulative value that you're explaining is, is about uh, 20%, or a little bit less than 20%. The, the US data actually, for the US, the, the first five years of, uh, of dividends are much lower. Um, and uh, so, so, so that is an, in, an interesting observation already. But uh, so what we what we see here is well, it, it is downward trending. In the, if, if I go back to to the left panel, it's downward trending. Maybe because uh, uh, lower discount rates, uh, because interest rates dropped, uh, and so so the the far out dividends make up a, a larger portion of the overall stock price, but. But what is kind of nice to see is this blip that you see just before the onset of the, of the COVID crisis, because that means that the market originally expected dividend smoothing, you know, stock prices started to drop, but, but dividend futures prices didn't drop yet. Uh, but then at some point, uh, the market seemed to have figured out uh, that dividends actually are now at risk and, and this drops. Uh, down, uh, jumps down and crashes down and only recovers uh, partially. And you have a very similar picture of the, of the dynamics uh, for the US. You can see this blip uh, before the, 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 the crash was perceived obviously so severely uh, that dividends are, uh, expectations were then adjusted and, and, and jumped downwards. So, um, here is uh, uh, another uh, graph, which um, I, I think I need to speed up here. How, may, how much time do I still have? So, Jared, I, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, so you... Oops. So you have about you know, nine or 10 
okay four minutes uh, uh, then, if you want to take a full 25 to, to present yeah then then i'm fine then i'm fine so so now we're trying to uh, to see um you know what 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 are the uh, uh, the return characteristics of these futures and uh, so so what we do here is we we report the cosqueness betas uh, of these constant maturity dividend futures that we created uh, again for one year for two years for three or four years five years uh, so essentially, these betas are from a simple regression, as, as it says in the caption below, where we regress the excess return on these dividend futures, or the returns on these dividend futures, on the squared market return, and the, and the, and, and this, the, the, the regression coefficient is, is the cosqueness beta. And you can see that, indeed, uh, dividend futures are, are negatively cosqueued. Um, and that if you, if you look at the red crosses, uh, those are for the period 2017 March until February 2020. So um, the longer maturities are even more negatively co-skewed. Um, and, and then the black dots are the more recent estimates of the co-skewness of, of dividend futures. And you can see that the black dots, especially for the one-year uh, contract, but also for the two-year contract, are now much more negative. Um, and and uh, and then, uh, as you go out longer maturities, then you know, since since a lot of the uh, the uh, effects presumably have have been already priced in, uh, you actually get a, a slightly less negative cost cumulus. And 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 it, uh, in in. In, in general, the, the results for the US data is, uh, are, are quite uh, similar, um, maybe even more dramatic here. So you, you see all the black dots are below the, the red uh, crosses. So, so there's, there's more negative cosqueness in the more recent data. Um, now let us look a little bit more in the, in the cross section. And, and uh, for the cross section, we, we are more or less confined to use the, the Eurostox 50 because there we do have um, a liquid market for uh, for firm specific firm firm indiv individual uh, dividend futures. Whereas in the U.S., for, for some uh, strange reason, uh, the market for uh, individual firm fu dividend futures is is completely liquid. So so we cannot use that. But it's also more liquid in the UK. So we do have uh, similar results confirming our Euro stocks 50 results for the UK. So what you see here is a, a simple regression. When you regress the uh, cumulative drawdown uh, of the dividend futures in, in the first quarter on uh, the cumulative drawdown of the individual stocks. Yeah. And, and so you see the, uh, the, the slope coefficient of 1.35 which again shows you dividends uh, seem to have been much more uh, volatile than uh, the stock itself. Uh, this, this essentially uh, re or confirms the, the picture that I just showed you. Uh, the, the, essentially what I showed you is the first line of the, of, of the upper panel, the beta of 1.35. Uh, what it means, what, what, what else do we have here? Uh, it, it, it says if we, if we use the 2021 dividend futures, um, then uh, we, get, uh, we get similar uh, results. We get a slightly lower beta. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, if, if we go out uh, for the whole year, uh, then uh, we do get a little bit lower uh, betas, but still, uh, it is it is within uh, the range of one. You know, it, it's not not significant, not significantly different from one, and it it has a, a significant intercept. So alpha is, is significantly positive here. Uh, yeah, this is just the, the 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 summary statistics. What I want what I wanted to show here is simply that uh, we do have. Uh, uh, firms that uh, uh, for for which the the dividend. Uh, 
that, that completely eliminated uh, dividends. Uh, right. Um, and where is, where is, so, so, so these, these futures became, became worthless. Uh, whereas the the Eurostox 50 member, all all uh, Eurostox 50 uh, members uh, had had also a, a, a drawdown of 55 percent. Okay, uh, so now in the last few minutes, um, let me uh, show you some uh, correlations between firm characteristics and uh, drawdowns and and. Our sample is relatively restricted. We have 50, uh, 50 stocks for the Euro stocks 50. Um, and, and so what we do here is, is essentially provide a correlation analysis. Uh, and, and we see that debt, which is, which is essentially just the uh, book leverage, uh, is, is, is very significantly positively related uh, to, drawdown, to dividend uh, drawdowns in the first quarter. Uh, the maturity of debt, so the more short-term debt, if you have you know, short-term debt is less than one year maturity over, over total debt, uh, that also comes in uh, positive and significant. Uh, retained earnings, those firms that had already retained a larger share of their earnings in 2019, they, they had lower uh, di uh, dividend cuts in the, in the following year, not so surprising. And firms that, that had more co negatively co-skewed uh, stocks, uh, stock prices, stock returns, uh, they also exhibited uh, more significant uh, uh, drawdowns. So, so this is just a summary uh, slide, which which essentially uh, uh, says that what 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 we what what the evidence indicates is that uh, dividend smoothing um, uh, was 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 abandoned in in uh, during during COVID. Uh, div stock dividend futures crashed even more than individual stock prices recovered less. And there are certain ca firm characteristics which correlate significantly, uh, as I just uh, told you. Okay. Can you move to the next slide? Okay. I think uh, uh, we can even uh, skip that one and go to the next one right away, because that's just a sort of a, an introductory slide. Yeah. So now, uh, we're trying to get some feeling of, you know, how, how did dividend cuts actually uh, occur? Uh, because most of the results I showed you were based on first quarter uh, price drops in dividend futures, which is essentially an expectation. Um, and, and, and so here uh, we, we, we do have uh, the full year's uh, dividend cuts, which uh, which shows that for the euro, uh, the, uh, there are actually quite a few, uh, you know, more than 10 uh, of, of the firms, uh, they, they completely, so a number one means that that was a, a cut down to zero. Uh, and, and for the US, as, as I said, we don't have futures data. So, so we couldn't, and this, the, the, because to the left, the euro data are relative to expectations at the beginning of the year because the expectations at the beginning of the year are reflected in the futures prices. But in the US, we don't have reliable firm specific uh, futures uh, prices. So we, uh, we just use the, the dividend cuts uh, defined it as relative to last year's paid dividend. So and we, we see that there is also a, 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 a spike here, which, which is actually at uh, at 75 percent, interestingly, at, in Europe uh, it's one, but in the U.S. dividends are paid quarterly. So presumably, a lot of U.S. farms had already decided on the first quarter dividend and therefore only cut uh, the remaining three quarters. Whereas in the Europe, uh, this uh, was a complete cut since we don't, we only have annual dividend payments. Okay, can you move to the next slide, please? Okay, so, so just to, to show you the, the role of, of regulation, uh, here are the top dividend cutters. So uh, we, we give you a list of all the firms in the Euro stocks 50 that cut their dividends by more than 50%, at least 50%. And you, you do see a lot of financials there, uh, uh, Societe Generale, uh, ING, BMP, and so on. But you also see Airbus, 
uh, which did announce its dividend cut before it got government aid, uh, which then would you know, require it to cut it. Uh, but there's also utilities, there is uh, consumer discretionaries, uh, uh, which uh, cut uh, seriously IT, uh, in, uh, sorry, sorry, Nokia uh, and, uh, and, uh, and others. So, so yes, there are, uh, there is an overrepresentation of financials uh, but uh, but obviously uh, that's not the full picture. Okay. Yeah, and, and this this is um, the uh, uh, the picture that you get for Europe uh, if you look at the Eurostox banks. Uh, you you see the. Uh, dividends in the red line, they, they drop dramatically and they don't recover. They even keep going down all the way through the end of the year. And then the, the, the black dotted line is the, is the uh, imputed value of the Eurostox 50 overall. And the green line or the green line is the imputed uh, uh, dividend uh, dynamics of the uh, Eurostox 50 without financials. So, so even there you see a large drop and, and you see only a partial recovery. And, and, and the right picture is again this, you know, how, what percentage of the overall uh, stock price uh, can be explained by the, the first four or five dividend futures. And you see the same thing, it first goes up as the, as the stock price starts to drop, but, but dividends don't respond yet, but then dividend uh, futures crash, okay? Next slide, please. And the last slide that, uh, that I want to show you is that uh, we, we did look at uh, changes in, in systematic risk before and after the, uh, the crash. Uh, and if you look at the table below, you see the, uh, for all 50 stock, uh, stocks in, in the index, the, the median and the mean beta almost by definition didn't change much, although we, 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 uh, we, only, uh, we, we, we don't have the value weighted here, this is just the median and the mean. Uh, and for financials, you, you see a, a huge increase in beta by 0.3. And if you just take the severe dividend cutters, you also get an, a severe increase in, uh, in beta by about 0.3. Okay, switch to the conclusion slide, please. Okay, so let me uh, quickly wrap up. Um, what, what we presented here is evidence that dividend smoothing seems to break down in disaster states. Uh, firms with overall very high leverage, with short, more short-term debt, with lower retained earnings, with uh, more negative co-skewed uh, stock prices, uh, and more assets, I forgot to uh, explicitly uh, explain that, more assets in COVID-affected regions uh, uh, and those that are more subject to regulatory constraints, uh, namely the, the financials, they show more severe dividend cuts. Um, and, and this is uh, quite consistent with the puzzle that near, near maturity dividend futures exhibit anomalously, anomalously under, under quotation marks, high returns. And uh, these, these risk premia namely seem to come with exposure to disaster risk. And the final note, uh, dividend cuts in disaster states are, give us some hint that the cost of capital for these firms might go up, might be high. Uh, and that's something the regulators should be aware of uh, when they discuss uh, dividend restrictions uh, in, in those situations. Thank you very much. <laughs>